hello students now we are going to learn the second part of the lesson organization of tissues last class we have learned about plant tissues now we shall learn about animal tissues one or more type of specialized cells constitute a tissue this we have learned in plant tissue also the study of tissues is known as histology what is a simple tissue now a group of cells that are similar in origin form structure and they work together to perform a specific function then it is a simple tissue what is a compound tissue a group of cells different in their structure they are not similar they are different in their structure and function but they coordinate to perform a specific function then it is a compound tissue so animal tissue can be grouped into four types they are epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue first one is epithelial tissue epithelium means covering it covers the external surface of the body and also internal organs the cells are arranged very close to each other in epithelial tissue without leaving any intercellular space it lie on the non cellular basement membrane so all the cells are arranged on the non cellular basement membrane and the epithelial tissue lacks the blood vessels there will not be any blood vessel innervation into the epithelial tissue and these are of two types they are simple epithelium if they have only one layer of cell and compound epithelium if they have several layers of cell so here this is a compound epithelium which is having several layers of cells functions of the epithelial tissue the skin which forms the outer covering of the body protects the underlying cells from drying injury and also microbial infection our skin only protect us from any infection so that's why when we have a cut or any injury we apply antiseptic because through that cut or the break of the skin any microbes can enter it also helps in the absorption of water and nutrients epithelial tissue are also involved in the elimination of waste products the skin eliminates the unwanted salts as well as the lactic acid from our body some epithelial tissue perform secretion they are secretory in function secretion of sweat saliva mucus and enzymes are the examples of this simple epithelium it is formed of a single layer of cell it forms a lining for the body cavities and also the lumen of the duct the simple epithelium is further divided into the following type they are squamous epithelium cuboidal epithelium ciliated epithelium and glandular epithelium let us see one by one squamous epithelium it is made up of thin flat cells with prominent nuclei and these cells are having irregular boundaries you can see the irregular boundaries of the cell the squamous epithelium is also known as pavement membrane because it form a single layer and it is flat like a thin membrane it forms a delicate lining of the buccal cavity buccal cavity means your mouth cavity alveoli of the lungs the bronchioles will enter into the ends in the alveoli which is a small sac like structure where the exchange of gas take place in your lungs and the proximal tubule of the kidney so we know that kidneys are made up of nephrons first region of the nephron is called as the proximal convoluted tubule after the glomerulus and the covering of the skin and the tongue so it the squamous epithelium are present in the buccal cavity alveoli of lung proximal tubule of the kidney and covering of the skin and tongue it protects the body from mechanical injury drying and invasion of the germs cuboidal epithelium it is composed of a single layer of cubical cells you can see the cubical cells which is arranged in single layer in the cuboidal epithelium and the nucleus is round and lies in the center and this tissue is present in our thyroid vesicles 
salivary glands, sweat glands and exocrine pancreas also. It is found in the intestine and the tubular part of the nephron as the microvilli. So microvilli means small finger like projection, fine finger like projection that will increase the absorptive surface of the organ. So when they are present in the intestine, small intestine, so microvilli will help in the absorption of the digested food. So absorptive surface area will be increased by the presence of this microvilli and that is made up of the cuboidal epithelium. And the main function is secretion and absorption. Now columnar epithelium. So it is made up of a single layer of slender, elongated and pillar like cells. And their nuclei are located at the base. It is found lining our stomach, gallbladder, bile duct, small intestine, colon. Colon is nothing but large intestine. OB duct, OB duct in the female reproductive organ and also form the mucous membrane. So this columnar epithelium will form the mucous membrane of our body. They are mainly involved in secretion and absorption. Ciliated epithelium. So they are nothing but similar to the columnar epithelium but the cells will be a hair like outgrowth which is called as cilia and thus it got the name ciliated epithelium. Their function is to move the particles or the mucus in a specific direction over the epithelium. And it is seen in the trachea of the windpipe, bronchio bronchioles of the respiratory tract, kidney tubules and fallopian tubes of the oviduct. Glandular epithelium. Epithelial cells are often modified to form the specialized glands. And this specialized gland cells will secrete the chemical substances at the epithelial surface. This lines the gastric glands, pancreatic tubules and intestinal glands for the secretion of the intestinal juice. Then, compound epithelium. It consists of more than one layer of the cell. This we have already seen, isn't that? So, the main function of this epithelium is to give the protection to the underlying tissue against the mechanical stress and chemical stress. They also cover the dry surface of the skin and the moist surface of the buccal cavity and pharynx. Pharynx is nothing but our tondi. Connective tissue. The next type of tissue is connective tissue after epithelial tissue. And this provides a structural framework and gives support to the different tissues forming the organs. So without this tissue, the organs cannot have its structure. And its permanent structure will be maintained by the presence of this connective tissue and it prevents the organ displaced by the body movements. So we, we move our body uh, any way when we do our exercise, when we do our uh, protein work, we move our body in many ways and uh, all the organs are not getting displaced because of the presence of the connective tissue. So it prevents the organs displaced by the body movements. And the components of this tissue is cells and fibers. And what are the different types of connective tissue? Connective tissues are of these four types. They are connective tissue proper. Example for which is areolar and adipose tissue. Supportive connective tissue. Example for this is cartilage and bone. Dense connective tissue for this example is tendons and ligaments. Fluid connective tissue. Example blood and limb. Now first one connective tissue proper. Connective tissue proper consists of collagen fibers, elastin fibers and fibroblast cell. I repeat, connective tissue proper consists of collagen fibers, elastin fibers, fibroblast cells. Now first one, areolar tissue. It has the cells and the fibers loosely arranged. You can see the cells in between and the fibers which are loosely arranged. It is fine thread like structure leaving small spaces called areola. The spaces in between are called as areola. And it joins the skin to the muscle. The skin is attached to the muscle because of this areola tissue and fills the space inside the organs. And it is found around the muscles, blood vessels and nerves. It helps in the repair of tissue after injury. So after any injury, repairing of the tissue is done by the areola tissue. Next is adipose tissue which is a type of connective tissue proper. 
adipose tissue is the aggregation of fat cells and adipocyte adipose means fat so they are nothing but the aggregation of fat cells fat cells are otherwise called adipocyte and it is spherical oval in shape it serves as a fat reservoir and they are found in the subcutaneous tissue so subcutaneous means cutaneous means skin so below that so below that you have the fat layer it is found in the subcutaneous tissue around the heart region kidney and also around the internal organs you can see this adipose tissue so they act as a shock absorber around the kidney and the eyeball so when we fall or move very harsh movement they these adipose tissue which are around the delicate organs will act as the shock absorbers then they regulate the body temperature by acting as a insulator so we are able to withstand the cold climate hot climate etc with the help of this uh, subcutaneous tissue which, which is below the skin that act as a uh, insulator and regulate our body temperature next is the supportive or the skeletal connective tissue forms the endoskeleton of the vertebrate body endoskeleton the bone which is inside the body so it protects the various organs and helps in the locomotion also it, the supportive tissue include cartilage and bones the cartilage they are soft semi rigid and flexible and they are less vascular in nature so soft means you can bend the bone or air pinna and your nose they are having the cartilage bone so they are soft and semi rigid flexible the matrix is composed of large cartilage cells and these cartilage cells are called as chondrocytes how are they called chondrocytes so these cells are present in fluid filled spaces called as lacunae so the cells are arranged in the fluid filled space which is called as lacunae and the cartilage is present in the tip of your nose external ear end of all the long bones to avoid the friction and erosion of the bones trachea and larynx so larynx is your voice box trachea is your windpipe continuation it provides the support and flexibility to the body parts next is bone so bone is a solid rigid strong non flexible skeletal connective tissue and the matrix is rich in calcium salt and collagen fibers the matrix of the bone is in the form of the concentric rings this is the matrix and this concentric rings are called as lamellae the bone cells present in the lacunae are called as osteocytes so the cells of the cartilage are called as chondrocytes and the cells of the bones are called as osteocytes and they are also present in the lacunae so there the chondrocytes were present in the fluid filled cavities which are called as lacunae so here the bone cells are also present in the lacunae and the bone cells are called as osteocytes they communicate with each other by the network of fine canals called canaliculi this is the canaliculi the fine network of canals fine canals and the hollow cavities of spaces are called marrow cavity and they are filled with the bone marrow and they provide the shape and the structural framework of the body bone support and protects the soft tissue and other organs now the third one is the dense connective tissue so it is a fibrous connective tissue densely packed with fibers and fibroblast it is a principal component of the tendons and the ligaments i hope you all know what are tendons so tendons are cord like strong structures that join the skeletal muscle to the bones so muscles are connected to the bones by the tendons and tendons have greater strength and limited flexibility so we are when whenever we do any work these tendons are helpful for the movement of the body they consist of parallel bundles of collagen fibers between which are present the fibroblast so they have the parallel bundles of collagen fibers between which are present the fibroblast cells now the ligament they are the highly elastic structure 
and they have great stems which connect bone to the bone so these are the ligament they are highly elastic structure they have the stems which will connect the bone to the bone and they contain very little matrix they strengthen the joints and allow the normal movement of the body fourthly we have the fluid connective tissue so blood and the limb are the examples for fluid connective tissue and this will link different parts of the body so all the materials are taken to each and every part that forms the link for all the parts of our body different parts of our body the cells of the connective tissue are loosely packed so the cells of the connective tissue is very loosely spaced and they are embedded in an intercellular matrix so intercellular matrix forms the plasma so blood contains the corpuscles which are red blood cells erythrocyte white blood cells leukocytes and the platelets which are called as thrombocytes a fluid matrix called plasma matrix is plasma i said it is a fluid so plasma contains inorganic salts and organic substances and it helps to transport the nutrient substances what are red blood corpuscles or erythrocyte the rbc they are oval shaped circular biconcave disc like cells and they lack nucleus so mature rbc will lose its nucleus so they contain the respiratory pigment which is called hemoglobin which helps in the transportation of oxygen to the tissues white blood cells or the white blood corpuscles leukocyte they are larger in size contain distinct nucleus and colorless and they are amoeboid and play an important role in the body's defense mechanism so they fight against all the invading germs and so they play an important role in the body's defense mechanism they are amoeboid means they will move from one region to another region in between the tissues they engulf and destroy the foreign bodies wbcs are of two types first one is granulocytes the next one is a granulocyte granulocytes have irregular shaped nuclei and cytoplasmic granules they include neutrophil basophil and eosinophil a granulocyte lack the cytoplasmic granules cytoplasmic granules will be absent and they include lymphocytes and monocytes blood platelets so they are minute a nucleated fragile fragments of giant bone marrow so because they are produced out of the bone marrow and so they call it as fragile fragments of giant bone marrow there is no nucleus and they are minute they play a very important role in the blood clotting mechanism so when the blood oozes out of your body when there is a cut the blood has to clot if it clotting does not occur the person has to lose large amount of blood and have to die and bleeding is prevented by this platelets next is limp limp is a colorless fluid and it is filtered out of the blood capillaries so it comes out of the blood and it is a colorless fluid it consists of plasma white blood cells mainly helps in the exchange of material between the blood and the tissue fluid muscular tissue so first we had the epithelial tissue second connective tissue and third one is muscular tissue muscular tissues are made up of muscle cells and they form the major part of the contracted tissue so muscle contract and relaxes which helps in the movement of the body as well as the movement of the internal organs they are composed of the numerous myofibrils myo is a term for muscle each muscle is made up of many long cylindrical fibers arranged parallel to one another types of muscles there are three types of muscles namely skeletal muscles which is otherwise called striated muscle smooth muscle which is otherwise called non striated muscle and the third type is cardiac muscle skeletal muscles these muscles are attached to the bones and they are called as skeletal muscles because they are attached to the bones they are called as skeletal muscles and they work under our control and so they are known as voluntary muscles 
and the muscle fibers are elongated cylindrical unbranched with alternating dark and the light bands this gives them the striped and the striated appearance and they possess many nuclei they also occur in the bicep and tricep of our arm this is your bicep and below we have the tricep smooth muscles these muscles are spindle shaped muscles with broad middle part and tapering ends and there is a single centrally located nucleus and these fibers do not bear any stripes and so they are called as non striated they are not under the control of our will and so they are called as involuntary muscles and the walls of the internal organs such as blood vessels gastric glands intestinal villi urinary bladder contain this type of smooth muscles cardiac muscle it is a special contractile tissue present in the heart and the muscle fibers are cylindrical branched and uninucleate they are cylindrical branched and uninucleate and the branches join to form the network of intercalated disc so the branches will form a network of intercalated disc which are unique distinguishing feature of the cardiac muscle and the contraction of the cardiac muscle is involuntary and rhythmic it is not under under our control and it is rhythmic nervous tissue this is the last type of tissue the nervous tissue comprises of neurons or nerve cell they are the longest cells of our body and neurons are structural and functional unit of the nervous system so this is the neuron the elongated slender process of the neuron or the nerve fibers and each neuron consists of a cell body which is called cyton with a nucleus and cytoplasm the dendrons are short highly branched protoplasmic process of the cyton the axon is a single long fiber like process that arises from the cyton and it ends up with the fine terminal branches they are called as axon terminal next we have cell division are you aware that all living organisms start their life from a single cell do you know it you may wonder how a single cell then goes to form such a large organism and when a child is born have you seen a newborn baby it will be so small but soon within months you can see the enlargement of the body the child will grow bigger and bigger all cells reproduce by division and the division of the cells into daughter cells is called cell division there are three types of cell division they are a mitosis mitosis and meiosis A mitosis is otherwise called as direct division mitosis is called as indirect division and meiosis is called as reduction division the first a mitosis a mitosis is the simplest mode of cell division and it occurs in the unicellular animals like protozoa aging cells and fetal membranes during a mitosis the nucleus will elongate first and a constriction will appear in it which deepens and divides the nucleus into two this is followed by the division of the cytoplasm resulting in the formation of the two daughter cells so here you can see the constriction that happens in the nucleus after the elongation of the nucleus and this is followed by the constriction of the cytoplasm dividing the cell into two daughter cells and this is the process of a mitosis now mitosis mitosis was first discovered by fleming in 1879 and this cell division one parent cell divides into two identical daughter cells two identical daughter cells means the resulting cell will possess the same amount of dna same number of chromosomes and genes so they will be typically identical to the parent cell but they will have the two copies and that's why it is otherwise called as 
equational division mitosis consists of two events they are karyokinesis and cytokinesis kinesis means division karyo nuclear division cyto means cytoplasm division so karyokinesis and cytokinesis so it consists of different stages the first stage is called the interphase so interphase is the resting phase of the nucleus this happens in between two consecutive cell division and it is the interval between two successive cell division the cell prepares itself for the next cell division that is called as interphase karyokinesis the division of the nucleus into two daughter nuclei is called as karyokinesis and it is consisting of four phases namely prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase i repeat prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase first phase prophase pro means first so during this first phase the chromosome become short and thick the chromatin reticulum they will condense to form the chromosomes and they become short and thick and are clearly visible inside the nucleus and the centrosome which is an organelle will split into centrioles go to the poles and occupy the opposite poles of the cells like this north pole and south pole like that they occupy the opposite poles of the cell then spindle fibers appear between the two centrioles so we can see the spindle fibers which appears in the centrioles the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus in the nucleus will be disappearing gradually next phase is called as metaphase meta means after the duplicated chromosomes they will arrange on the equatorial plane so i have talked about poles the centriole they will arrange themselves in the opposite poles and the central line is called equatorial plane and the chromosomes are arranged in the equatorial plane and this forms a metaphase plate the equatorial plane forms a metaphase plate and each chromosome gets attached to the spindle fibers by its centromere see here and the centromere of each chromosome divides into two and each being associated with the chromatid so like this so this is the chromatid this is the centromere so before it was joined together so after the attachment of the spindle fiber to the centromere they will break and they will divide into two the centromere attaching to the two chromatids divide and the two daughter chromatids of each chromosome separate and migrate towards the opposite poles next one is telophase each chromatid becomes thinner and turn into chromatin threads the spindle fibers will break down and they will also disappear the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus will reappear what is cytokinesis the division of the cytoplasm into two daughter cells by the constriction of the cell membrane is called cytokinesis so a furrow will be formed and this will uh, deepens it will continue to deepen till two daughter cells are formed cell division mitosis so this is the interphase preparatory phase which comes in between two successive cell division next is prophase in which chromosome will become thick and shorter and the centrosome will divide to form two centrioles and they will move to the poles then metaphase the chromosomes will arrange themselves on the equatorial plate and after which the centromere will join itself will attach itself to the spindle fibers and they will have a break at the center having each chromatid and they will break off and they will be pulled towards the poles which is followed by the telophase and the cytokinesis significance of mitosis this equational division result in the production of diploid daughter cells that means the parent cell will have the 2n number similarly the daughter two daughter cells also will possess 2n number of chromosome so diploid daughter cells are produced out of mitosis with equal distribution of the genetic material in multicellular organism growth organ development and increase in the body size are accomplished through this process called mitosis mitosis also helps in the repair of damage if we get any injury if the wounded tissues are renewed by this mitosis and the last cells are got back by the mitosis meiosis the term meiosis was coined by farmer in 1905
and it is a kind of cell division that produces the sex cells on the gametes the gametes are produced out of the meiosis it is also called as reduction division because the chromosomal number is reduced to haploid the 2n diploid number is reduced to haploid and so it is called as reduction division and meiosis produce four daughter cells mitosis is only two daughter cells meiosis will produce four daughter cells and meiosis consists of two division they are called as heterotypic division or the first meiotic division and homotypic division or the second meiotic division so meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 are the two divisions of the meiosis we shall see the heterotypic division first in this a diploid cell divides into two haploid cells the daughter cells resulting from this divisions are different from the parent cell in the chromosome number that means the parent chromosome will have 2n number whereas the daughter cells will have the n number of chromosome that is haploid and that's why it is named as heterotypic division and this consists of five stages prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 telophase 1 and cytokinesis 1 in the first stage the prophase 1 takes longer duration and it is again subdivided into five stages they are leptotene stage zygotene stage pachytene stage diploptene stage and dikinesis now let us see one by one during leptotene stage the chromosome becomes uncoiled and they assume a long thread like structure and they take up specific orientation inside the nucleus they form a bouquet stage during zygotene stage zygon means adjoining the two homologous chromosomes approach each other and they begin to pair pairing of the homologous chromosome happens during the zygotene stage and this is what is called a synapsis the next stage is pachytene stage So pacus means thick. The chromosomes are very much visible during this stage, and they are uh, seen as long, paired, twisted threads. And these pairs, so formed, are called as bivalent. And each bivalent will now contain four chromatids. This stage is called as tetrad stage. Homologous chromosome of each pair begin to separate, and they do not separate uh, completely, but they remain attached at some points, forming X-shaped arrangement. And this is what is called as chiasmata. The chromatids break at these points, and the broken segments may get interchanged, and this process is called as crossing over. As a result, the genetic recombination takes place. Now, next stage is called as diploptene stage. Here in this stage. each individual chromosome of the bivalent begin to split longitudinally into two similar chromatids and the homologous chromosome repel each other and they separate and chiasmata also begin to move along the length of the chromosome from the centromere towards the end resulting in the terminalization next stage is called as dikinesis the paired chromosomes are shortened and thickened now and the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus will disappear and the spindle fibers makes their appearance next is to prophase 1 is metaphase 1 the chromosome orient themselves on the equator as we have seen in the mitosis and the two chromatids of the each chrom chromosome do not separate and the centromere does not divide during the metaphase stage during anaphase stage each homologous chromosome of its two sister chromatid and the undivided centromere will be moving towards the opposite pole of this stage so because of this stage of chromosome is called dyad and the telophase the haploid number of chromosome after reaching the respective po poles become uncoiled and they get elongated and after this the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus will reappear once again and thus the two daughter nuclei are formed and this will be followed by the cytokinesis in which the cytoplasm will divide and two haploid cells will be resulting meiosis prophase 1 so all the four stages take place like leptotene zygotene pachytene diploptene dikinesis after that metaphase on which the chromosomes will orient or arrange themselves in the equatorial plane and here there is no separation of the centromere there is no cut of the centromere and the homologous chromosomes will be separated to the opposite poles forming two different nuclei with the haploid number of chromosomes followed by the cytokinesis next we have meiosis 2 that is homotypic division so here in this division two haploid cells are formed during the first meiotic division they will divide into four haploid cells so the daughter cells are similar to the parent cells here and so it is called as homotypic and it consists of five stages namely prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 telophase 2 and cytokinesis 2 
in the prophase the centrioles will divide they will move to the opposite poles and it this is similar to the mitosis aster and the spindle fibers will be up here nuclear membrane and nucleolus will be disappearing in the prophase 2 in the metaphase 2 the chromosomes will arrange themselves on the equatorial plane and the two sister chromatids will be separated the separated chromatids will become the daughter chromosome and move towards the opposite pole by the attachment of the spindle fiber and the daughter chromosomes are centered the nuclear membrane the nucleolus will reappear this is followed by cytokinesis in which the cytoplasm will divide forming four haploid daughter cells so four cells are resulting out of this meiosis 2 with haploid number of chromosomes what are the significances of meiosis meiosis is responsible for the formation of the sex cells or gametes that are responsible for the sexual reproduction and the constant number of the chromosome in the given species is maintained by meiotic division because during fertilization and zygote formation n number of chromosomes from the mother and n number of chromosomes from the father will be uh, fused together to form the zygote in which the 2n number is again regained by which the species will maintain the constant number of chromosome by this meiotic division now let us see the differences between mitosis and meiosis mitosis occur in the somatic cells whereas the meiosis occur in the reproductive cells and mitosis involve in growth and it occur continuously throughout the life of the individual whereas the meiosis is involved only in the gamete formation and only during their reproductive stage and mitosis consists of only single division whereas meiosis consists of two division we have seen the heterotypic division first one and the homotypic division second one in the mitosis two diploid daughter cells are formed whereas in the meiosis four haploid daughter cells are formed in, and in the mitosis chromosome number in the daughter cell is similar to the parent cell that is 2n is maintained whereas in the meiosis the chromosome number is just half that is n n of the parent cell well, identical daughter cells are formed in the mitosis whereas the daughter cells are not similar to the parent they are not identical to the parent